Hello creepy friends and welcome to my channel. Surprise! Here's my face. I never show my face on videos because I don't like to record myself and I don't wear makeup, which is not the best thing when doing HD video or 4K. Today we're going to be doing my tier ranking of all the books that I've read so far in 2024. And I've read 59 books up until today, June 28th. Now, a few disclaimers before we continue. I have never filmed myself before, so sorry about the lighting. There's going to be a glare off my glasses. I don't know how to fix that with the equipment that I have. Sorry. Uh, second of all, if you hear a strange noise or like slurping in the background, that's one of my dogs. Thirdly, this is just my opinion. My opinion doesn't matter. I'm just a person putting crap on the internet. So. If I hated a book that you loved, there's nothing wrong with that. Power to you. I'm so happy that you enjoyed it. Good. Uh, it doesn't matter what I say. This is just for fun. And lastly, I have made no notes. I have not gone back and reviewed anything that I have read. This is just whatever I can remember. <laughs> so I have ordered these books in the order starting with the most recent book. So. The further we get along, the less I'm going to remember about these. So that should be interesting. The categories that I have made here. Uh, at the bottom, hot garbage. I hope I don't have to put anything in there. We'll see how it goes. <laughs> Sorry if I do. Uh, next one is meh. You know, like, it didn't really work for me, but it wasn't the worst thing I've ever read. The middle one is just, it's fine. I didn't love it. I didn't hate it but I don't necessarily regret reading it. Orange is good job. So that's like pretty great. And then no notes is, you know, perfect for me. I loved it, that kind of thing. So the most recent thing that I just finished is Pizza Girl, which is kind of just about an unhinged young 18 year old girl who does some crazy shit at the end of the book and who has mental illness and alcoholism. So it's kind of in the category of books that I usually like a lot and I enjoyed it. So I think I'm gonna put it, I don't know. I'm gonna put it here for now. We'll see how it goes. Um, next is When We Were Orphans by Kazuo Ishiguro. I really love his other books that I've read. This one is not a sci-fi, it's like a historical fiction. So it's not up my alley quite as much. The writing is incredible, it's beautiful but not my favorite of his books. So I'm going to stick it right there. I think we're going to have a lot like just smack in the middle here. Okay. Haruki Murakami, Dance, Dance, Dance. I've been reading through Murakami's works in publication order. So I'm not liking the stuff at the beginning as much as I like the older, uh, the newer stuff. So this is going to go right here. It's the fourth book in the rat series. There's four of them. They have, an unnamed narrator. He does some weird stuff happens, but not too weird, which is what I like about Murakami. So not that great. Yellow Face. Okay. This book I did not enjoy reading whatsoever, but it is written very, very well. And it does what it's setting out to do amazingly. So I'm putting in a good job. We have The Woman in the Dunes by Kobo Abe. This is a very, uh, this is a surrealist novel um, written in the 1960s in Japan, 1950s or 60s, I don't remember now. Um, I have a review of that on my website and also on my Instagram. A lot of these I have on my website and my Instagram, bibliocreep.com, if you want to read the actual reviews, or you can check out my Instagram at biblio underscore creep. Okay. Again, kind of like yellow face, it is not an enjoyable reading experience. It's a lot of stress, but it is conveying the ideas that it wants to convey about society and capitalism and class and things like that in a really good way. So I'm going to put it in. Good job. All right. Now I'm going to put these three Murakami books together. Hear the Wind Sing and Pinball 1973 were the first two uh, novels that he ever had published. Again, it's the beginning of his career. It's the writing is good. 
his writing is always good, but not a lot's happening, and it's not quite as weird as I would like it to be. And the older stuff in Murakami has a lot more misogyny in it than the later stuff. So, you know, they're fine. You know, the writing saves it a little bit. <laughs> so it can go in the middle. Actually, you know what? I'm changing my mind. We're going to put them in meh. I think they're not really worth reading. If you like Murakami and you're like a hardcore Murakami fan and you want to read everything he's ever written, then read it. But like, other than that, you don't really need to read it. And The Strange Library by Murakami is a short story that was published with a bunch of art in its own book. And it's a beautiful book visually, and I think that's the main appeal of this book. The story is weird and it has some characters from some other of his stories, but again, it's not like a must read, so we're, I'm gonna put it here. Why is that doing that? Okay, I don't know. Uh, right, now, Untold Night and Day. Now, this one is a banger, all right? This book is going directly to no notes. I love this book. This is my favorite book that I've read so far this year. That does not mean that I'm recommending it to you, though, because this book is not for everybody. It is surrealist. A lot of it doesn't make any sense. <laughs> it's a lot of strange imagery. It's set in Korea during a heat wave in Seoul. So this woman is just kind of wandering around at night. A bunch of surreal stuff happens. It has a lot of juxtaposition between night and day, dark and light, blindness and seeing, things like that. It's in my wheelhouse, but I don't think just anybody would enjoy it. They probably think it's boring or confusing. But for me, awesome. All right, the eyes are the best part. So this is a, a horror novel and it's by Mana Hakim and it's her debut novel and it was really, really good. I didn't give it five stars. I think I gave it four and a half. But for a debut, it's really, really good. <laughs> So I'm going to put it in no notes because if I base it on that's the first novel that she's had published, it's, it's amazing. And it has to do with a young woman who eats uh, eyeballs. So there's that. It's real gory. If you can't handle eyeball stuff, don't read it. But the way that it talks about race and the patriarchy and things like that was very well done. All right, Interior Chinatown. This book has a very interesting structure. It's written like a screenplay. So it's unlike anything that I have ever read and the writing is really good. It wasn't up my alley as much, but I really appreciate what the author has done here. So I'm gonna put it in good job. Probably a lot of people would really enjoy this book. All right. Um, no one is talking about this. This was a real big disappointment for me. On the surface, this should have been something that I really like. It has a kind of unlikable female main character, which I usually like. And it's a stream of consciousness in the beginning, which I also really like, but it just didn't do it for me. I don't know why. Well, there were a couple reasons why. There's a little bit of ableism in it that I did not appreciate. But overall, I also wasn't that interested in it. So sorry, this is going in meh. It's not hot garbage, the writing is good. And again, I think a lot of other people would probably like that one, just not me. Amatka. This is a kind of dystopian sci-fi and it was translated from Swedish. And it was, if you like dystopian and sci-fi, this book is really interesting. And it talks about how language kind of creates and holds together the world that we live in. So it, it's kind of dark too. So I really liked it. I'm gonna put it in good job. Death Valley by Melissa Broder. I really, really enjoyed this book. I think I also gave it a 4.5. Um, it's about a woman who has kind of a hallucinatory psychedelic journey through the desert has to do a lot with grieving, a lot with mental illness, things like that. So this is something that I would like, and I did. And I also love cacti, so that's a plus too. So we're going to put her in... 
We'll put in no notes. Okay. Tana French, the hunter. Sorry, Tana French. This is going in meh. So I there's some Tana French books that I love that I've given five stars to. Just not this one. I didn't find it very interesting. All of her books are very long. Her writing is beautiful. She makes you feel like you're in Ireland. So that part's great. The vibes are great. But they're so long that if you're not that interested in the plot, it's just too much. So I'm putting that one in meh. All right, the bell jar goes straight to the top. I'm gonna to be very stereotypical and say that I love this book. <laughs> this book was like written for me. So I know there's a lot of problematic things in this book too. It was written in the 60s, I believe. So, you know, there's some racism in it. There's some homophobia in it. There's a lot of things like that. So for me, this book is amazing. It really portrayed depression in a way that I related to. So especially that depression that you have in your early 20s when you're just like don't know what you're doing with your life. It was perfectly portraying that for me in my experience. We have our first hot garbage book. I am so sorry to do this but I'm putting Murder at Pirate's Cove in hot garbage. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I didn't want to have to do it. But I gotta be honest with you. This is not good. <laughs> it's the first book in a series, a murder mystery series. It's just, it's filler. It's a filler. It's just like, it's a cozy mystery, but it's just, it, it's not that well written. The characters are kind of annoying and it was extremely predictable. So there are a lot of other much, much better mysteries that you could read. Uh, we have The Change by Kirsten Miller. The women in this book start getting powers as they enter perimenopause. So they then take revenge on some terrible men who do some terrible things. So there's nothing I like more than that. So we're going to stick it in. Good job. Good job. No notes. Mm, we'll put in good job. Maybe we'll move it later. Audrey Lord, the master's tools will never dismantle the master's house. No notes. <laughs> this is an essay. Uh, I didn't read the whole book. This, I just read this short essay. And actually it was a speech that she gave at a conference in the 80s sometime. And it has to do with intersectional feminism. It's a, you know, she is a quintessential writer that, that has written a lot about intersectional feminism. So it's great if you haven't read it, it's really fast, it like takes 10 minutes to read. So go read it. All right, Adventures of Amina al-Serafi, no notes. Uh, love this book. It's about pirates and everybody's queer mostly and everybody's a person of color and it's set in like the, the waters around the Middle East and there's a sea monster, like it's got everything. Magic. <laughs> And it's a really good time. So I can kind of recommend this to everyone. I don't know why you wouldn't like this book. I don't generally like adventure type books or pirate books. I'm like, that's not a thing for me, but I love this book. It's great. You should read it. All right. The Membranes by Chi Tawei. So this is a book by a Taiwanese author. It was written in the 90s but I've just started seeing it, the translation of it around recently. So I don't know how that happened. I don't know if it just recently got translated or if it's just starting to get like noticed now. But anyway, I'm going to put it in good job. This is a really good book. It has a nice like twist ending that was interesting. You're trying to kind of figure out what's going on with this woman's life. It's set in the future when we've destroyed our environment and everybody's living, well, most people are living at the bottom of the ocean in like these settlements. So very interesting book. It talks about a lot of different things, a lot of different social issues and things like that. So if you like sci-fi and you like translated fiction, this is a really good one. Or I more like speculative, I guess. It's not like set in space or anything like that. Ghost Station by S.A. Barnes. Um, 
I'm going to put it in It's Fine, but like it's on the upper end of It's Fine. Um, it's a good book. It's written well. And it is a, a thriller or a horror, I guess, set in space, set on a space station that's been abandoned and some alien stuff goes down that's very creepy. It is a very creepy book. Um, you know what? Now that I'm talking about it, I'm going to put it up here. Um, I didn't put it all the way to the top, though, because I loved S.A. Barnes' first book, Dead Silence, more than this one. So I was that's the only reason I was a little bit let down because I love the first one so much. And they're not a series, these are all standalone books, but, uh, so I just couldn't rate it as high as that one because that's the one I like the best. <laughs> but it's really good. If you like creepy stuff happening in space, amazing, okay? All right, Razor Blade Tears, right to the top. Um, this is by S.A. Cosby, it's a thriller. It has to do with a white man and a black man teaming up, unlikely duo to, that was my dog, to avenge the murder of their two sons who were married to each other and who had a small child. Well, that's my Cosmo. <laughs> He's moving to a different area to sleep. Okay, yeah, so uh, amazingly well-written, very emotional. Uh, I love everything that I've read by S.A. Cosby. He just has a way of conveying the feeling and giving you the vibes of the situation that are just incredible. There's a lot of violence in these books and they are very difficult emotionally, so just be aware of that, but amazing. Dahlgren. Ugh, I really want to put it down here because it was such a disappointment to me, but I'm not going to put it all the way down. I'm going to put it here. This is considered one of the masterpieces of science fiction. It was written, I'm pretty sure this was written in the 60s too? 60s or 70s? I think 60s, I don't remember. It's by Samuel R. Delaney. He's a black author who wrote, uh, he's very prolific. He's written a ton and most of it is sci-fi. There are some essays and things like that. And this is considered like his masterpiece. It's like 900 pages long. It's written in a strange kind of stream of consciousness style. The time is a little bit weird. You follow this kind of unnamed main character. He enters a city in the Midwest and it's set in kind of something apocalyptic has happened, but we don't know what it is. I was expecting greatness and it didn't quite go where I wanted it to go. <laughs> I don't know. I might not have gotten it. You know, it was written in the 60s. It was saying something. But me in 2024 reading it, I don't know if I got it. There's way too many sex scenes in it. It was way too graphic. It took up too much of the time of the book. Like I said, it's 900 pages long. And I didn't really understand the purpose of them. <laughs> so maybe read somebody else's analysis of it if you're trying to decide whether to read it. A lot of people have tried to figure out what it means. But I read it. And I was disappointed by it. All right, you know, we're gonna put all of Murderbot together, so we'll get to that a little later. Three Body Problem. I'm gonna put in Good Job. This is an amazing sci-fi. You probably know it from Netflix because Netflix has adapted it. Um, it's a really good book. It's got a lot of really interesting ideas. It's very inventive. Like I've never read anything else quite like it. Um, it's the first in a trilogy. I've read the whole trilogy. This was a reread for me because the, the TV show was coming out. So I wanted to reread the first one and it's good. There are some things that are misogynistic in it, but few things in there that rub me the wrong way. And, but overall, like really, really great sci-fi. So especially if you like hard sci-fi. The next two, um, I'm gonna put them up here. A memory, call, a memory Called Empire and a Desolation Called Peace. It's a duology by Arkady Martin. This is my like kind of sci-fi. So there's like political stuff going on, machinations, like a mystery, a political mystery, uh, an assassination and like queer stuff. So. <laughs> Uh, that's my thing. I like that. That's the type of thing I like. 
very well written. It's the first thing I've ever read, read by this author, and I had a great time. I want to reread that sometime. All right, uh, we got to speed up. This is taking forever. Northanger Abbey, my first Jane Austen that I've ever read, and it it's not her best novel, I've been told, but it really surprised me because I am not a classics person. Well, I'm a classics person, but more like 1900s, like 20th century classics, not stuff that this, that's this old, usually. Amazing. She's hilarious. It's great. So I need to read some of her other things, um, but I was pleasantly surprised. The Fire Next Time, straight to the top. Um, James Baldwin is, uh, I don't know, I, I bow down at his feet. He's amazing. Um, <laughs> this was another reread for me. Um, everybody should read this book. It's about racism, specifically in America. There's also an essay in there about American Christianity and how it like holds up the patriarchy and the racism in America. It's incredible and it's very short. And the essays are written as if they are letters to his nephew. So gorgeous. Read it. Thornhedge by T. Kingfisher. It's fine. No problems with it, but also not the best thing I've ever read by T. Kingfisher. I tend to like T. Kingfisher's horror more than the cozy fantasy or the romance stuff, but it was good. It was cute. It was entertaining. And I liked that the main male character was Muslim. So that was nice. Translation state. I'm going to put it here. I really enjoyed this. Not quite as much as these ones, but it was really, really good. Also has to do, it's a sci-fi. It's in the Imperial Ratch universe. This is not directly in that series, but it's set in the same world as that series. So it has some of the same alien races and things like that. Um, I really enjoyed it. There is some like very uh, difficult parts, like assault and things that happen in cannibalism. So check out the warnings if you want to go for that one. What feasts at night? Um, hmm. I'm going to put this here too. This is another T. T Kingfisher. I did like it more than Thornhedge, but Again, I don't like it as much as like the hollow places or the twisted ones or a house of the good bones. Like that's the T, T Kingfisher that I'm like really in love with. Again, great short novella, creepy. Um, and it has a non-binary main character, which I personally really appreciate. Let's just, oh, it's Haunting of Velkwood. Okay, Haunting of Velkwood is gonna go right here. Um, Another creepy story. I read this as an arc, so I read it before it came out or right when it was coming out. Um, I've never read anything by this author before. It was a nice ghost story, but it wasn't as creepy as I thought it was going to be, so I was a little disappointed there. Like, I think it might have been mismarketed a little bit. Um, but it has to do with a neighborhood that kind of, like, blinked out of existence, and there was three girls who survived it, like, had gotten out of the neighborhood right before that happened but they're like somehow responsible for that happening. And so they have to go back into the neighborhood and kind of, I don't know, fix things or try to save the people that they left behind, that kind of thing. It was creepy and it was nice. Uh, it had a lot of themes of like family and grieving and things like that as well. All right, we are going to just stick Murderbot up here. I'm not going to go into details of the different ones, but like this series as a whole, I love it. I love Murderbot. And I am on the autism spectrum, and so I really relate to Murderbot <laughs> a lot. These books are hilarious, and they're short. Almost all of them are novellas. I think there's one full-length novel in there. It is snarky. It is funny. It is delightful. So if you enjoy funny stuff, sci-fi, as I've said in a lot of my other videos, if you're not a sci-fi person, but you're looking to start to like ease into sci-fi, this is a great place to start. The first book is All Systems Red. The Stars are Legion, uh, also going to the top. Now we're getting kind of like into the beginning of the year where I don't remember things quite as well. 
<laughs> I don't remember the details. I remember how I felt, but I don't remember the details. You know what I mean? Okay, so the stars are legion. This is another kind of queer sci-fi situation. There are no men in this book. They just don't exist. And we don't ever find out why. <laughs> Which, you know, props to the author for just doing that and not explaining it to us. Uh, yeah, loved it. Has There's, again, there's like shady political deals and like machinations and like weird planets that are alive that are like part biological and part mechanical and strange things are happening. And everyone is queer because there are only women. Okay. Case of the Alperton Angels, hot garbage. Apologies. I have read two other Janet Hallett books, Janice Hallett books, <laughs> and I really enjoyed those ones. They tend to all be like epistolary in some way, like emails or voicemails or things like that. This one just didn't I didn't get the point of it. Like the story was not like logically making 100% sense to me and I just didn't care. Yeah, that's all I'm gonna say about that. Let us believe in the beginning of the cold season. I'm gonna put it in good job just because I'm not a poetry person. This is a poetry collection by a very, very famous and talented Iranian poet. She died tragically at a very young age in her 30s. Since I'm not a poetry person, I'm not putting it all the way to the top, but as far as poetry goes, this is really good poetry. It's very sad, <laughs> sad woman poetry. There's some hopeful stuff too, but I would say mostly if you're a sad girl and you like sad girl poetry, check that one out. A Night in the Lonesome October. I'm going to put this in somewhere around here. I'm going to put it here. Am I putting it there? Yeah. I just don't remember that much about this book, so it didn't make that much of an impression on me. I remember enjoying it at the time that I was reading it, but I don't recall a lot about it. It has a, like anthropomorphized animal characters. So they're talking and doing things and they are paired with humans and it has to do with magic. So it was fun. I liked it, but like I said, I don't remember that much about it. The Women Could Fly, sticking it at the top. I loved this book. <laughs> I think uh, it doesn't get enough hype. I don't see it around enough. I think everybody who likes you know, like a uh, witchy stuff should read it. It has a lot to do with um, race and misogyny and things like that. And women in, this is like America in kind of the present day, but things are different in the sense that women, some women develop like witch powers and they have to be closely like regulated by the government. They need to get married by the time they're 30 because the government believes if you don't, then that's like you turn into a witch kind of a thing, like an old crone or whatever. <laughs> so it's a really good book. And I found the main character very, very relatable. I really liked how she was written. So very good. We cast a shadow. Oh man, okay. Yeah, I'm going to put it here. Um, we cast a shadow. How do I explain this? This is a very, again, I would put this in the same category as like Yellow Face in that it is a very well-written book and it was really good. And it really like emphasized a lot of things that I personally have not experienced. And so I really appreciated that. It is very hard to read. You're in the head of the main character, who's a black man in America. In this America, it's kind of, again, the same time frame as now, but things are a little bit more dystopian and racism is actually worse than it is now. And you were inside his head hearing all this internalized racism, like the whole book. So it was a very enlightening, it was beautifully written. It has a lot to do with like ch ch child and parent relationships too really good. Uh, also addresses generational trauma, but you got to be like ready 
emotionally to read this book, but it is amazing. So when you are ready, definitely read it. My Sister the Serial Killer, it's fine. Um, I liked it. I think then this is another book that is mismarketed. Like I've seen it on a lot of, I saw it on a lot of horror lists and things, and this is not a horror book. I mean, the, the sister murders people, but it's not a horror book. It has to do with families and like familial relationships and sisters and things like that. Yeah, there's some murder in it, but I guess maybe it's a thriller. I would just put it in like literary fiction personally. So it wasn't what I was expecting. And so I was a little disappointed, but I think that has to do with how it was marketed. Okay, Womb City. Now this is another debut and it was really good. I'm gonna put it here and good job. Um, the only note I have about this book is it, I think the author kind of crammed a little too much into one book. There are many, many very interesting ideas. This is another science fiction kind of dystopian situation, but there are also like gods and ghosts and <laughs> things like that as well. Um, it's kind of long, so I do think that it could have been pared down a little bit and like streamlined a little bit, but as a debut, very interesting, has a lot of very interesting concepts in it, and it was very well written. I was definitely I did not know what was going to happen like I was on the edge of my seat I have some questions for you I didn't really like this book it's not hot garbage it's not poorly written it just wasn't for me <laughs> uh and I've seen a lot of like divided opinions about this book so maybe re go read some go read some reviews online before you pick it up Brides of High Hill. Um, I'm gonna put it here. Um, that was another arc I had. This is from the Singing Hill Cycle by Nevo. I love Nevo's writing style. It's gorgeous. It's very lyrical. It really describes a place and paints a picture for you. And this is a fantasy series set in, generally set in Asia. It's not specified a country. Um, and there are mystical beings all around, and there's another non-binary main character. So this is a great series. And they're all novellas, so they're short to read. Something is Killing the Children. It's fine. It's a graphic novel, horror graphic novel. Um, it was fine. I don't have a lot to say about it. It's about monsters that are murdering children. And there's kind of a strange, dark, mysterious society going on but I've only read the first volume so I don't know you know what happens after that for me it was fine um the imposition of unnecessary obstacles uh I'm gonna put it in it's fine um I really enjoyed the first novella in this series this is the second one I enjoyed the first one more this one still had a good story but I found the relationship, there's a romantic relationship between the two main characters. I found that like lacking a little bit. There was a little bit of a miscommunication trope, which is not really what I enjoy. And I was missing some of that description of the world that was in, more in the first one. So it's not bad by any means. And it's kind of like a noir mystery set in space in the future. It's still worth reading. I'm not. It's not bad, but it just didn't like grab me as much as the first one did. Karstick by John Waters. Um, I'm gonna put it in. It's fine. John Waters is a weirdo. Only read this book if you know John Waters already and you know that you like his stuff. Otherwise you're gonna be very confused and it's not gonna make any sense to you and there's like a lot of weird sexual stuff in it. So <laughs> I thought it was funny but his sense of humor works for me, but I think a lot of people would not enjoy that book. Okay. Um, this was a reread for me at the very beginning of the year. It's Annihilation, Acceptance, and Authority, which is the Southern Reach series by Jeff Vandermeer. This is one of my favorite series of all times. I've read it multiple times, and there is a fourth book coming out in 
October, I believe, and I have pre-ordered it and I am so excited for it. This is horror and sci-fi mixed together. Um, I've talked about it a lot <laughs> on my channel. I will link in the description box the videos where I review a lot of these books, so you can go back and hear my full reviews there, or like I said, you can go to the website and read them. Um, but this is very kind of surrealist writing, uh, hallucinatory, has to do with aliens that have kind of infected a certain part of the United States and Florida, and so it had to be kind of sectioned off by the government. There's a mysterious agency called Area X that's in charge of dealing with that, and they've been sending these expeditions of people, and they either don't come back or they come back very strange. So that's how it starts. It's amazing. I love Jeff Vandermeer. Again, he's he's in the category of what's called like strange fiction. There's a specific genre with that name. No, weird fiction. Weird fiction. <laughs> And so it's very specific, like China Mieville is in that category. So if that's something that you like, this is for you. Again, not everybody is going to like it, but it's at the top for me. Einhalo. I'm putting that right here. That was my first arc that I ever reviewed. So that was so much fun. That was in January this year. This is kind of a, uh, oh, I'm not going to say what it is because it'll give it away. This is a retelling of an old horror story. It's very well written. It's set in Scotland. It's got those gothic vibes. You really feel like the windswept atmosphere and it's creepy and it's got body horror in it. So if you like any of those things, that's a, that's a great book. Okay. The Girl with All the Gifts. I'm going to put that here too. This is a zombie apocalypse type of novel. And it was very heartwarming, actually. <laughs> Has to do a lot with like relationships and things like that, taking care of each other, found family type things, coming of age. So there is gore and death in it because it is a zombie apocalypse situation, but emotionally, it was kind of a nice book, <laughs> actually. And it has a nice ending, I thought. Tinfoil Butterfly, it was fine, but I was expecting something else out of it, I guess. I was expecting it to be more creepy. I think some of the reviews that I had seen had really hyped it up as being really creepy and it wasn't as, it was sad. It was real sad, but it wasn't as creepy as I wanted. It is a horror book. There are horrific things in it, but mostly it was depressing me. And then the last book is out there by Kate Folk. Kate, Kate Folk. This is a short story collection of speculative fiction. I loved it. I'm not usually a short story person all the time, but this was really good. It was uh, Kate Folk's first published like book. Um, so whatever they get up to in the future, I'm gonna read because I loved what I saw so far. And it's funny and dark and sci-fi. There you go. All right, that is it. Again, I've just gone by my feelings today at this very moment, but this is interesting. I have so many at the top. You know why this is? People are gonna be like, you're just overrating things, like you're rating them higher. But what it is, is that if I don't like something, I don't finish it. These are only the books that I finished. I DNF like out the wazoo. Like I will drop that like, a hot coal <laughs> potato. I don't know. I will drop it immediately. If I don't like, if I'm like, I'm not enjoying this, I don't want to continue. I drop it and I move on to something else. That's how I read so many books because I don't bog myself down. I might come back to them later, but I'm a big fan of DNFing. So the reason that there are so many more books in these top two tiers than the rest of it is that. I just don't finish things if I'm not enjoying them. So based on that, I end up with more finished books that I actually did enjoy, which I recommend to you because you want to enjoy the things that you're reading. Don't be afraid to DNF things. I tell that to people all the time. Um, okay. So I hope you enjoyed this. It was fun just like talking at the camera. If you enjoyed this, let me know that you want some other tier ranking videos. I could maybe rank some series, uh, books by specific authors, things like that. So 
stay tuned in July. I'm putting out a bunch of videos in July. I don't know what order I'm putting them out in, so I don't know if you've seen it already, <laughs> but I'm putting out my reading journal mid-year flip through. So you'll get to see everything that I've done in my reading journal up until this point. I will have my reading wrap up and the mid-year book freakout tag. If I've already posted that, I'll put it in the card. And then I'll also have my setups for August for my reading journal and for my bullet journal. So I hope I see you next time. I love you guys. Thank you for watching. Thank you for subscribing. Take care of yourself, drink your water, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.